Chris is going to answer some questions in the text, so thank him for his participation. Now, merciful servant, you're part of Ahl al-Sunnah wa Jama'ah, right? You're a Sunni, correct? You're a Sunni, right? You're not a Shia. Yeah, yeah. You're not a Shia. You see, again, the coward. Did you catch the coward? I want this to be on record. The coward agreed he was going to answer questions, but now he's ashamed of his prophet. And I want people on YouTube to see how these Muslims are afraid to defend their prophet and their religion because they know it's false, it's garbage. His name is Merciful Servant. That's okay. I want it recorded. I want people to know. Everyone on YouTube watching this, Merciful Servant is ashamed and afraid to defend his garbage because he knows better. You can't defend Muhammad and anti -Christ. Now you need to go. Okay. Now you need to go. So leave merciful, and now we're going to have a silent voice, a silent voice defend his wicked prophet, this antichrist. Guys, does my room say the Trinity, or does it say the Trinity in Islam? So who are the cowards who can only be men when they have ISIS surrounding them? It says Trinity and Islam, right? Oh, so let's see who the coward is. So a silent voice. I'm going to silence your voice. Let's see. Are you a Sunni? What are you? Are you a Sunni or a Shia? Because you're not going to last if you don't answer questions. I'm going to silence you. Did he leave too? Boy, these guys run real quick, don't they? <whistles> Why are they ashamed of their religion, folks? Why are they scared? Didn't Merciful Servant agree to answer questions, Renee? Wasn't this the gentleman that you were vouching for? Anyway. Do you blame them? Would you want to defend Muhammad and his teachings? Not me. Thank the Lord Jesus. This Antichrist is under the feet of Jesus. And may the Lord Jesus save this, these Muslims from this wicked prophet. Lord Jesus, save them. All right, anyway, let's get back to Islam and the Trinity Part 2. Part 1 is already up. Thank our brother Nehemiah for recording. Part 2, we're going to continue providing evidence that the Quran itself has a Trinity of its own. But I want to be clear. The Trinity of the Quran is a false Trinity. It's a counterfeit Trinity. It's a satanic trinity because all religions that contradict the gospel of Christ are not of God. They're either human inventions or influenced by Satan. I have to be upfront. I don't mean to offend people, but hey, it's the truth, right? Just like Muslims would say that Mormonism is of, of the devil, Baha'ism is of the devil, we Christians say any religion that contradicts the gospel of Christ is of the devil. And Muhammad is an antichrist, according to scriptures. It's facts. What I believe on the testimony of God's word, the Holy Bible. Now, if you remember in part one, you remember in part one, we discussed the Quran as the speech of Allah, the word of Allah, kalam Allah. Do you guys remember that? And all this entails for Islamic belief in the unity of God and how incoherent, unintelligible this doctrine is. Because it posits about 115 persons, centers of consciousness within Allah, and the Quran argues with Allah, disputes with Allah, right, intercedes with Allah, on behalf of those that recite it, showing that Allah is either, again, I mean this with no disrespect, but I'm using the very language Muslims use against our belief in the Trinity. He's either schizophrenic or he's a multi personal being. Therefore, the claim that Islam teaches Tawheed, absolute singularity of Allah, is a lie. Allah is not singular in his consciousness. That's a lie. They do affirm a plurality of attributes, but my discussion and the Muslim sources prove. That the Quran consists of 114 chapters, all of which have consciousness, all of which can speak and argue with Allah, all of which can independently and separately in visible form. For the evidence, go to part one. Right? I will give you the link to that. But there's one more element I want to add to the Quran. And then we're going to go into the spirit in Islam. Again, let me repeat. The spirit in Islam is not the true, pure, holy spirit of the Father and the Son revealed in Christ and in the Holy Bible. You have in Islam, in the Quran, a counterfeit, another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel that Satan has concocted to resemble the true Jesus, the true spirit, the true gospel, in order to do people to following this religion as a legitimate religion. Lord Jesus, save Muslims from this lie, save Christians from this lie, save everyone from this lie and bring them to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, are we ready? Okay. 
All right. So, Christian Princess, are you in the room? You can comment in the text. You don't need to send me instant message so everyone can benefit. Post what, what you just posted in, in my IM. Guys, watch this. Christian Princess and Glory to Thee, these two, used the arguments in part one. And I'm in the room. And they admitted to her, they admitted to her, Glory to Thee, right? That these hadiths were sound, right? Until they showed, basically, it's, it teaches a counterfeit trinity, and they got bounced. The very hadith I use in part one to establish the counterfeit trinity, the Muslims admit these are sound narrations, and then they got bounced. Right? Okay. Well, let me give you some more arguments. Are you guys ready for more arguments? Using the, the counterfeit trinity of Islam to bring them to the true trinity of the Bible, the glorious trinity revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. You ready? Who's ready here? Who's awake? I'm excited. I'm awake. Okay. Now, I don't know if this is going to show up. What I want everyone to do is go to cronbrowser.com. I don't think this is going to show up. Cronbrowser.com. This cron browser that provides various English translations belongs to the website answering this, the website I write for. It's our browser. But I want you to know we made this available free of charge. If the Lord puts her want to contribute to the ministries, it would be a blessing. Go to groundbrowser.com. Go there. Right? This is the browser that is part of our website, Answering Islam. I'm going to be looking at chapter 1 of the Quran. I'm going to use the Arabic translation. Because I suspect if I post it here, it won't show up. So just do 1. That's chapter 1 of the Quran. Just so go into the box, just put the number 1 and click. It will come up. Right? So, because I want to show you something. Because this is going to now help. Did it show up? I just posted it. Peltox has been giving us problems. Didn't show up, did it? Didn't show up, huh, Nehemiah? All right, that's fine. That's fine. Chapter on the Quran, I'm using our bear. Okay, guys, I'm going to read it for you. Remember what we, what we discussed and the evidence shows. The Muslims believe that the Quran is uncreated, beginningless, eternal and the part of Allah. Okay, that's what they believe. All the chapters in the verse of the Quran are eternal, beginningless, uncreated. They existed before creation. All right. Let me read chapter 1, which is a prayer. In fact, Muslims have to recite chapter 1 in all five of their daily prayers. Roughly seven times. My memory doesn't fail me. May the Lord Jesus protect me from error and mistakes. I pray that he enables Islam correctly and refute it. Okay. Notice what chapter one says. Uh, chapter one says, guys, please pay attention. This will bless you, will help you, and embolden you to reach Muslims for the truth of Christ. Watch this. It begins in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. Praise belongs to God. God Allah. The being. To thee only we pray for succor, meaning help. Only you we pray for guidance and strength. Guide us in the straight path, the path of those whom thou hast blessed, not of those against whom thou art wrathful, nor of those who are astray. Guys, understand the implication of this. This chapter, chapter 1, Surah Al-Fatiha, is a part of Allah's speech. And as the speech of Allah, it's uncreated, it's beginningless. Meaning, this prayer has always existed in eternity. So here are my questions. Here are my questions. Number one, if this is an uncreated prayer, who's praying it in eternity? Who's praying the words, Thee only we serve. To thee alone we pray for succor. Guide us in the straight path, the path of those whom thou hast blessed. Who's asking Allah, to guide them, to bless them, and not curse them, as those who went astray, those who are in his wrath. Who's saying to Allah, you Allah, alone we worship, serve. You Allah, alone we pray for help. This is an uncreated, beginningless prayer that's always existed, but who's praying it? Now, let me give you the options. A, Allah, B, the crown itself, C, preachers. Here are the three options. A, Allah, 
B, the Quran is praying. C, preachers. Now let's go through it and see why this is a problem. C, creatures. If you say this prayer is anticipating the existence of creatures and they will pray it, you have a problem. Either this means that all the stories, all the events, all the peoples, even those people mentioned it in this surah who will go astray and be under Allah's wrath, were predestined to exist and do exactly what the Quran says they would do, so there's no free will. Let me explain that again. If the Quran is uncreated, eternal, beginningless, that means every single event, every single sin, every single person has been predestined to take place, so all the sin, all the evil, all the immorality, evildoers were created, the predestined to exist because the Quran says they would exist and so because the Quran says it they have to exist which means that part of the prayer that part of the prayer that says guide us right in the straight path verse 7 those whom thou has blessed not of those against whom thou art wrathful nor of those who are astray that means the Quran is actually telling us Allah has already predestined people that he'll create whose wrath, right, they, they will experience, and who will be misguided, who will go astray. Therefore, no one has free will. Everyone's been pre-programmed to do exactly what Allah wants them to do, because these events, these verses, these people, these sinners, must exist and do exactly what the Quran says they'll do. Did you get it? Do you understand? So there must be people who will pray this prayer. They have no choice. There must be. Or, if you believe in human free will, now you have another problem. You have another problem. If this doesn't prove that these people were predestined to do what the Quran says they'll do, but that the Quran is anticipating the existence of free will creatures that will do this, that means the Quran, and therefore Allah, depends on creatures to come into being and do what the Quran anticipates them doing. Allah needs these creatures to make the Quran a reality, to make the statements of the Quran come to pass, come, come into being. Which means that Allah needs creatures to make the Quran an actual fact, an actual reality. To actualize all of its statements. But if he needs creatures for the Quran to be actualized, then that means Allah is not free of creation. He depends on creation and needs creation. Does everyone see the dilemma here or no? As the Lord Jesus anoints me with clarity of speech and thought. Now Maya and Pitar, do you see the problem here? Where is human free will? Or where is Allah's self-sufficiency? I thought Allah is free of all needs. But if you go with the free will argument, Allah desperately needs all these creatures to exist and desperately needs them to do what the Quran anticipates them doing in order to make the Quran an actuality, to actualize the statements of the Quran. Otherwise, Allah ends up in failure and the Quran becomes a big hoax. Yeah, they do. But then if they believe in predestination, you got problems. It's been predestined for me not to believe in Allah, so why mess with me? Leave me alone. Leave me alone, man. I'm just doing what Allah predestined. Allah predestined me to attack Muhammad and expose him. So leave me alone and let me accomplish Allah's will. Right? Now, my Patar, you guys are getting this? Sam, we are. You guys are. I put you to sleep with this. Okay. Now let's go with B. I said A, it's Allah praying. B, it's the Quran praying. Or C, it's creatures praying. Do you guys see the problem with C? Why C doesn't make sense? Just make sure that you enough of you are listening. You know it's being recorded. C doesn't make sense, right? Because it poses two problems. Let's go with B, the Quran praying. Okay, but now we got another problem. The Quran praying. So the Quran is saying that the 114 chapters of the Quran worship Allah. The 114 chapters of the Quran <clears throat> pray to Allah for help. And the 114 chapters of the Quran are praying that Allah will guide them 
So when it says in verses 5 or 7, the only we serve, that's the chapters of the Quran speaking in unison, saying to Allah, only you we serve. And then it says to Allah, only you we pray for strength. So the chapters of the Quran need strength. And then the chapters of the Quran are saying to Allah, guide us in the straight path. Why would they need to be guided? If they're part of the speech of Allah, aren't they already on the path of righteousness? And then why would they ask Allah to put them on the path of those who are blessed? Not those whose wrath they Allah pours out or those who are astray. So the Quran worships Allah. The Quran prays to Allah for strength. The Quran needs Allah to guide the Quran. But isn't the Quran the speech of Allah? Yes. Isn't Allah's speech Allah speaking? Yes. So if the Quran is praying to Allah and worshiping Allah and asking Allah to strengthen it and asking Allah to guide it, isn't this actually Allah worshiping himself, praying to himself, asking himself to guide himself? Right? So that means we're back to A. It's Allah praying. Because if the Quran prays, that's Allah praying. Because the Quran is the speech of Allah. And if it's the speech of Allah, it's Allah speaking. So that means we're back to point A. Allah is praying to himself, worshipping himself, asking himself to strengthen himself, and asking himself to guide him aright so he doesn't go astray and experiences his own wrath. Really? Did everyone get it before I move on? Did everyone get it? Those of you who have been here listening? Now go to, how much sense does this religion make? How much sense does this book make? How much sense does Allah make? And yet Muslims have the audacity to attack, to attack our trinity. You believe it? The, the, how dare they? Now we're done with the Quran. We're now going to talk about another member of Islam's trinity. Again, let me repeat. The trinity of Islam is not the true trinity revealed in Christ in the Holy Bible. It's a counterfeit trinity, satanic counterfeit, to mislead people from the true trinity. Islam presents another God, another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. But this other Jesus, other spirit, happened to be similar enough to the true Jesus, the true spirit, the true gospel, as to deceive people into following it, thinking it's a legitimate religion from the God revealed in Christ. So I just want to make clear, I'm not using the Quran to prove the Holy Trinity. Our Holy Trinity is not the same as Islam's Trinity. Okay, if we're ready, we're now going to talk about the Spirit in Islam. Right? Hold on a second. Come in. Second. One second. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get hot to on. Okay. So, with that said, with that said, let's talk about the spirit in Islam. The spirit in Islam. You ready for the spirit in Islam? Here's what I'm going to prove. First, the spirit of Islam is not the same spirit revealed in Christ in the Holy Bible, that produced the Holy Bible. But in Islam, God's spirit, the spirit of Allah, his spirit, Quran also says, has Allah saying, our spirit, is the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. That's the titles given to the spirit. The spirit is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the spirit of Allah. According to the Quran, this spirit creates and gives life. That's number one. According to the Quran, you back doomsday, you want me to bounce you again? You want to get out of here? According to the Quran, let's see, hold on, let's go. Let's see how long this guy's gonna last. Okay. According to the Quran, this spirit is a messenger sent by Allah, so he's different from Allah. And he's also different from all the angels, so he's not Angel Gabriel. So he's not Angel Gabriel, he's different from Allah. He can speak and be spoken to and appears as a man. So let me again review. Allah's spirit is called the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. He can create and give life and also strengthen believers, which means he has the omni-attributes of God. 
He can appear as a man, speak and be spoken to. So he's a person. He's personal. He has personality, personhood, right? He's distinct from Allah because he's the messenger of Allah and he's distinct from angels. So he's not a, he's not Gabriel. So are you ready for the evidence now? Are you ready for the evidence? Okay, Hatun, you're on, huh? Are you okay? Put a one if you're here. Because you're listening on Palpa. Where are you, sister? That's you? I am his? You've been here for a while, huh? Wow. Okay, I didn't know. I just saw your email. Sorry, sister. Are you still able to record this? Wait, wait. Hold on. I thought. I am his. Is it you? Oh, Hadessa. Okay, I'm confused. Come on, identify yourself. I'm saying. I don't get it. Okay. You here, sister? Because I am he, put a one. Don't put a one. Hold on, I am he. I am his. Hold on. No, they are recording it. It is. I just want to know if that's you. Hadessa, is that you? So you've been here from the beginning? How long you been here? Because I just saw your email talking about Zoom. That's why I said if you want to zoom me. So hold on, guys. How long you been here? Because I saw you come in. Oh, so you heard even my discussion on eternal begetting, the begetting and all that. You heard that? Because I gotta go in depth on that with you when we when we have a study. Because today I thought you wanted me to study with you, but anyway. So you heard that? Okay, good. Glory to Jesus. But we gotta go more in depth and show you the biblical basis. So you got the Quran and Surah Al-Fatiha. That you got. The problems with Surah Al-Fatiha. It's either Allah praying, the Quran praying, or creatures praying. So you got that. Remember this. Use it. Now we're going to talk about the spirit. This is stuff that you already know. Pray for our sister Hadessa. That's our sister, our warrior uh, in Christ, Hatun. Her and Lizzie go out in speaker's corner, witness the Muslims, and willing to give up their lives for Jesus. So pray. God, provide for them, preserve them. May the Lord make us warriors like her and Lizzie. So all right. Now let's talk about Let's talk about the spirit. Okay, here is the spirit. Let's talk about the spirit. Now, I've already went over this with some of you in the previous years and months, even Hatun, but we're creatures of repetition. We need to hear something over and over again before it becomes second nature. So here, let's go, chapter 19, 16 to 21. Now, again, I can't post the verses here. It won't allow me to. So go to QuranBrowser.com. QuranBrowser.com, and we're going to look at chapter 19, verses 16 to 21. I'm going to prove the spirit is a person, he has personality, can appear in human form, is the messenger of Allah, so he's different from Allah, is the creator and life giver, okay? And therefore, he's not Angel Gabriel, okay? Chapter 19 of the Quran, chapter 19 of the Quran, verses 16 to 21. 19, 16 to 21. You ready? Glory to Jesus. Okay. I'm reading the Arbery translation. So you can go to QuranBrowser.com, read it. If not, I'll just read it out loud. And mention the book Mary, the mother of our Lord, when she withdrew from her people to an eastern place, and she took a veil apart from them. Then we sent unto her our spirit. Number one, beware of translations that say our angel. The Arabic word here is ruh. Ruhana, Ruh, R-U-H, some will translate it as R-O-O-H. Ruh does not mean angel, it means spirit. So beware of translations that say angel. The word is spirit, our spirit. We sent to her our spirit that presented himself to her, a man without fault. Notice, Allah's spirit appeared as a perfect looking man. Okay. Now, Mary didn't know this is a spirit. By the way, this never happened. This is myth. This is fables. But still, for the argument's sake, Mary did not know this is Allah's spirit because she saw a man, and she thought, thought this man was up to no good. So she said, I take refuge in the all-merciful from thee if thou fearest Allah, God. He said, I am but a messenger come from thy Lord. Notice, the spirit appears as a man, speaks, so he's a person, and identifies himself as a Rasul, a messenger of Mary's Lord, Allah. So then why is he sent? I am 
but a messenger come from thy Lord to give thee a boy most pure. Did you catch it? Allah sent me to give you a son, to give you a pure son, a holy son. Notice the spirit comes to get Mary pregnant, not sexually. I'm not saying he has sex with her, God forbid. But he's announcing to her, I came to let you know you're going to conceive a son, and I've come to give you that son. Does everyone catch it? The spirit can appear as a man, perfect looking man. The spirit speaks, a messenger of Allah, who can give Mary a son while she's a virgin. In other words, create life. Isn't it amazing that Muslims will tell us Allah will not appear as a man because that's something that's beneath him, but Allah's own spirit, his own spirit will appear as a man? So either Allah's spirit is less dignified than Allah or Allah's spirit is greater than Allah because Allah's spirit is able to appear as a, as a man even though Allah won't or can't. You guys catch it? You see that? So either Allah's greater than that, becoming or appearing as man, which means Allah's spirit is less dignified, less honorable than Allah, or actually the spirit is greater than Allah because he can and does appear as a man, something Allah will never do or can't do. So damn if you do, damn if you don't. Either way, Muslims have problems, right? So if Allah's spirit can appear as a man and still be a spirit without this affecting his nature, why can't Allah and why won't Allah appear as a man? Right? <clears throat> why won't he? But beyond that, the spirit is Allah's messenger, so he's not the same as Allah, but he's the one who gives Mary a child, which brings me to the next point. Which brings me to the next point. 66, 12. How did the Spirit get Mary pregnant? How did the Spirit get Mary pregnant? Write down chapter 66, verse 12. Surah Al-Tahrim, ayah 12. Did it appear? If not, it's okay. I'm going to read it. Did it show up? Okay, good. And Mary, Imran's daughter, and Mary, Imran's daughter, guarded her virginity. So we breathe into her of our spirit. Notice, Mary protected her virginity and Allah breathed into her of our spirit. Notice it's that same spirit. This time Allah breathed the spirit into her. But now let me tell you what the Arabic actually says. Because I have to go into the Arabic a little bit. Not that I'm an Arabic scholar, but I'm a student of scholars. It says that Mary guarded her farj. The word guarded her virginity. Farjaha. Farjaha. Those of you who know Arabic know this. The word farj doesn't mean virginity. It means opening a hole. Literally it says Mary guarded her private part, her hole. She guarded it. And then it says we breathe into her of our spirit. It doesn't say we breathe into her because it says we breathe into it. Fihi. Fihi. Here it goes. This is the Arabic. Fi he. The word he is masculine. Literally, it's breathed into him. And it's referring to the farj. If the Quran wanted to say that Allah breathed the spirit into her, it would have used fi ha. Ha. Feminine suffix, right? It doesn't say fi ha. It says fi he. Fi he. Now, fi ha is used in 2191. So, literally, this is what it says. Mary, the daughter of Ramon, who guarded her private part, her sexual organ. We breathe into it, that private part, that organ, our spirit. Quite graphic. The Quran is graphically describing how Allah's spirit went into her private part. For what reason, guys? Why did the spirit go into her private part? And again, I don't mean to be irreverent. The Mary of the Quran is not the blessed mother of our Lord. It's a satanic counterfeit. But why did Allah breathe the spirit into Mary's part? Well, the spirit told her in 1919, so that I can give you, give you a pure boy. So Allah sent the spirit. He appeared as a man, spoke, so he's a person. Says, I'm a messenger of Allah. I'm going to get you pregnant. How? Because I'm going to enter into your private part and somehow cause you to get pregnant. 
How he did it, we don't know. What we know, he entered her private part to do it. But notice the other thing. It says, Allah said, we breathe our spirit into her. We breathe. So the spirit came forth from Allah. If Allah breathed the spirit, that means the spirit came out of Allah. If it came out of Allah, it's a part of Allah, not part of creation. You guys see it? You catch it? Are you a Muslim? Good, 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 good. No problem. Hold on, hold on. Man, maybe Kakashi will now help me make my case. Maybe God brought him. Kakashi, so you agree Allah's spirit comes out of Allah, right? It's a part of him, not part of creation, right? I guess we got a Muslim in our midst. Hold on, let's see. Okay, good. So it's not part of creation, it's part of Allah. Do you also admit that Allah breathed the spirit into Mary to get her pregnant? So the spirit got Mary pregnant? Wonderful. Al-Masihu Akbar. But hold on. In Surah Al-Maryam, Surah Al-Maryam, 19, chapter 19, 16, and 21, let me show you something about your, the spirit. Watch here. Watch here, Kakashi. Chapter 19, Ayah 17, And she took a veil apart from them, then we sent unto her our spirit. Same spirit of Allah came to her, presented himself to her, to her a man without fault. Now notice what the spirit's going to say to her. Surah al Maryam, Ayah 21. Watch here. Watch here. This is what he says to her. He said, even so thy Lord has said, oops, sorry, wrong verse. Surah 19, verse 19, sorry. Do you guys see the verses? Are they showing up? Ayah 19, Surah al Maryam. Okay, read this. Read this, Kakashi. Kakushi. He said, I am but a messenger come from thy Lord to give thee a boy most pure. So notice, Kakashi, the Spirit says to Mary, I'm going to give you a boy most pure. So that's the Spirit that Allah sent and breathed into Mary to get her pregnant. Do you agree? Do you agree? Good, guys. He said yes. The Muslim said yes. Hold on, though. The Spirit said he is a messenger of your Lord. And the Spirit appeared as a man. And the Spirit speaks. So the Spirit of Allah is a person who is a messenger of your Lord, who creates and gives life. I didn't say anything but Al-Masih. Appearing, but Al Masih is Akbar, he's greater than you and your God and Prophet. So, you just admit Allah's Spirit is distinct from Allah, different from Allah, is the messenger of Allah who can appear as a man and who creates and gives life. So, how many creators do you have? How many creators do you have? No, it's not created by Allah. You lie, you just admit it was Allah's Spirit who created Al Masih. Do I need to post it again? The Spirit here said, I'm going to give you a boy most pure. And Surah Al-Tahreem, which you agreed, Allah breathed the Spirit into Mary. And you admit the Spirit went to Mary to get her pregnant. So the Spirit created Al-Masih, not your God. So how many creators do you have? Al-Masih Akbar! How many do you have, guy? So wait, there's no difference between Allah and His Ruh? Okay, good, I'm, I'm glad. So when the Ruh appeared as a man, that's your God who appeared as a man. Guys, send him a flower. He just admit that the Ruh, because there's no difference between Allah and the Ruh, the Spirit, that means when the Spirit appeared as a man, his God appeared as a man. Alhamdul Masih. Alhamdul Masih. So what are you waiting for? When are you going to be a Christian? So who appeared as a man to marry? Allah or the Spirit of Allah? According to Surah uh, Maryam, who appeared as a man to Mary, your God or the Spirit? Do I need to post the verses? Who appeared as a man to Mary, Allah or the Ruh, his Spirit? Surah Al Maryam, 16 to 21. So his Ruh appeared as a man to Mary. And that's the same Ruh that said to Mary, I'll give you a son most pure. 
So was that your God who appeared as a man, saying, I'm the messenger of Mary's Lord? Or was that someone other than your God? Someone different from Allah? Someone different from Allah, or is that Allah? No, we don't notice anything. Did the Spirit appear as a man and tell me, I'm going to give you a son, get you pregnant? Yes. Was that your God, or is that someone other than your God? Who did it? Please, I don't have much time. I got to be gone in a little bit. So he admit the Ruh created Al Messiah. Thank you. By admitting that, you just admit the Ruh is the creator. He created Al Messiah. And the Ruh is not Allah. So let's do the math. Allah and the Ruh. The Ruh is the creator. That means you have two creators, two gods. Alhamdul Masih. Alhamdul Masih. Al Masih Akbar. How many creators, how many gods you have? Are you seeing these arguments now being used in debate and evangelism? Kakashi, you just admit the Ruh created Al Masih. Did he just admit that? Go back and look. But notice something. Al Masih said, "When Ruh created Al Masih, when Ruh created Al Masih, so then if that's Allah, you just admit Allah appeared as a man to Mary, and Allah is His own messenger. So guys, he just admit His God can appear as a man. Alhamdul Masih, Al Masihu Akbar. See how he's caught, guys? Do you see it now, Patar? Everyone else? Now, Hatun, do you see what happens when you know how to use the argument? You see how they get caught?" If he says Allah created Jesus, then the Holy Spirit is Allah. That means the Holy Spirit is Allah appearing as a man, and the Holy Spirit being Allah is his own messenger. Are you seeing it now? What has it got to do with by himself? That means your God Allah doesn't create by himself. That means your God Allah needs a partner to help him. So notice you're going to set yourself up. Notice what he just said. Did the Ruh create al Masih by himself? No, with Allah, but neither did your God create by himself, because your God used the Spirit. So just like the Spirit used Allah, Allah used the Spirit. So Allah has a partner, that means your God committed shirk. Alhamdul Masih, Alhamdul Masih. A Muslim just admits that his God has a partner who helps him create. That means his God is a mushrik. Al Masihu Akbar, Al Masihu Akbar. Wow, bro. Woo! <laughs> Beautiful. Keep it up. Keep it coming. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, it's being recorded, Sal. This is all going to be on <laughs> on, on YouTube. Uh, now Maya recorded. So people are going to think I'm crazy. Are you guys now seeing this is the way you prove the Trinity by the grace of God's Spirit? You put them in a corner, they can't get out of it? Okay. Kakashi, you want to help me some more? Or do you want to just take a break, sit down, and listen? Because the more you comment, the more questions I'm going to ask you, the more trouble you're going to create for yourself. So you just want to listen? Or do you want me to give you some more examples? So did we establish from the help of this Muslim who admitted the Ruh, the Spirit, created Jesus in Mary's womb? So Allah breathed His Spirit into Mary, which means the Spirit is part of Allah, which He admitted. Because if Allah breathed the Spirit, then the Spirit is part of Allah, not part of creation. Unless you want to admit that a part of Allah is created. Allah breathed the Spirit. So the Spirit comes out of Allah. It's a part of Him. So if you want to say the Spirit's created, that means there's a part of Allah that's created, which would be blasphemy. He also admits the Spirit and Allah, there's really no difference. So that means if the Spirit appears in a, as a man, that's His God appearing as a man. But then he said, did the Spirit create by Himself? No, He created with Allah. But neither did Allah create by Himself, because He used the Spirit. So the Spirit used Allah, and Allah used the Spirit. Therefore, Allah has a partner. Therefore, Allah is a mushrik. Wow. Yeehaw! Yeah. Horn, hin, hin, run, Sorry, no mic. This is on tape. Kakashi helped us prove that the Spirit is God. And notice, guys, the Holy Spirit can speak and be spoken to, so He's a person. And He can appear in human form. 
But that same spirit told Mary in chapter 19, 19, I am a messenger of, the, of your Lord. So Allah and the spirit are two distinct entities. The spirit is a messenger from Allah, whom Allah breathes out. So he's a part of Allah, not part of creation. And the spirit can appear as a man and can create and give life. What else do you Muslims need to see? That you guys are liars or deceived. You do not affirm Tawheed. Your God is not a singular person. Right? Is that clear? Everyone getting this? Okay, now let's go to the next line of evidence. Hold on, I got more. I got more. Next line of evidence. When Allah creates Adam, how does he make Adam? How does he bring Adam into life? Takashi, I'm going to need you. Don't go anywhere. Okay? This is Surah Al-Hijr, chapter 15, chapter 15, verses 28 to 29. So write down, chapter 15, verses 28 to 29. Did that show up, that verse? If it doesn't, that's okay. I'll post it. 15, 28 to 29. Okay, good. Okay, Kakashi, I got another question for you. Chapter 15, verses 28 to 29. And when thy Lord said to the angel, See, I am creating a mortal of a clay of mud molded. When I have shaped him, pay attention, Kakashi, Allah speaking to angels. When I have shaped man, Adam, and breathe my spirit in him, fall you down, bowing before him. Kakashi, why did Allah breathe his spirit again into Adam? He breathed his spirit into Mary to get her pregnant. Why here did Allah breathe his spirit into Adam when Adam was clay? For what purpose? Will you answer? For what purpose? For what purpose? Yes, Surah Al-Hijr, chapter 15, ayah 28, 29. Here's the ayah again. Here you go. I just posted it. Can you guys see it? Chapter 15 of the Quran, ayah 28 to 29. Here's 29. Dude, be serious, man. Go get the Arabic for yourself. The Arabic says what it says. He breathed his spirit into him. Stop the games. Okay? Why did Allah breathe his spirit, his ruh, into Adam? It's there in the Arabic. It's in Swahili. It's the same thing. Wait, wait. Did you guys catch it? He admitted to give Adam life. So wait. It was Allah's spirit that made Adam alive? Allah's spirit that made Adam alive? Hadassah, are you seeing this? Allah's spirit made Adam alive? Come on, Kakashi. My time's running out. I'm going to dot you if you don't answer. Oh, yes, but not with itself. Yeah, Allah and the spirit are working together, so they're partners. So both of them are mushrikeen. Wow. No, it doesn't say Allah's ability. Don't twist the text. It doesn't say bithni Allah. Stop. Shame on you for perverting your false book. Notice, guys, he admit, Allah breathed his spirit into Adam to make Adam alive. Notice again, where does the spirit come from? Is it part of creation or part of Allah? Is it a part of Allah or part of creation? Part of Allah or part of creation? Come on, guys, look at it. This spirit. Is it part of Allah or part of creation? It's a part of Allah because Allah said He breathed it. If He breathed it, that means it came out of Allah. If it came out of Allah, it has to be a part of Him. So that means the Spirit is just as old as Allah because it's a part of Him. But wait, the Spirit came into Adam and made him alive. So then that means the Spirit is the author of life. The reason why Allah sends the Spirit out of Himself, because it's by the Spirit that things live. So the Spirit is Creator and Life Giver. Alhamdul Masih, Al Masihu Akbar. So here is a Muslim having to admit, right? Having to admit that the Spirit is Creator and Life Giver. Wow! So far, are you seeing Islam's trinity revealed, unveiled, exposed? 
I love the Quran and the Spirit. I love the Quran and the Spirit. Okay. 32, 8 to 9 says the same thing, that Allah breathed the Spirit into us. But now, let me show you that Allah's Spirit is the Holy Spirit, and He's all-powerful, present everywhere. You want that? You want that evidence? Okay. Do you want the evidence? That Allah's Spirit is all-powerful, present everywhere? You ready? Who's ready? Okay, Hadassah already know this, but here, let's go. Chapter 2, verse 87 of the Quran. I can't post it, it won't show up. Write down chapter 2, verse 87, Surah Al-Baqarah. And we gave to Moses the book, and after him sent succeeding messengers, and we gave Jesus, son of Mary, the clear signs, and confirmed him with the Holy Spirit. Confirmed him with the Holy Spirit. Strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. The word is ayat. Ayat in Arabic. Okay, watch here. 287. Do you see that? 287 says, Allah strengthened, confirmed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Do you guys see it there? I just posted that part. Okay? And the word is, Wa ayat nahu. Wa ayat nahu. Wa ayat nahu. The word is ayat. Don't forget this word ayat. You're going to see why it's important in a minute. Okay. You're going to see why it's important in a minute. The other reference. Chapter 2 of the Quran. Surah Al-Baqarah 253. Chapter 2 verse 253. And those messengers. Chapter 2 verse 253. And those messengers. Some we have preferred above the others. Some there are to whom God spoke. And some he raised in rank. And we gave Jesus, son of Mary, the clear signs and confirmed him with the Holy Spirit. Again, second time the Quran says, Allah strengthened Jesus, confirmed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Second time. Catch it here? And confirmed him with the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. The word again is, <clears throat> Wa ayatnahu. Wa ayatnahu. Those of you in Arabic know what the word ayat means. Okay? Ayat. This is the same verb used elsewhere. And you're going to see why that's important in a minute. Just be patient. I'm going to show you. Okay? The third reference. Chapter 5, verse 110. Surah Al-Maida. Chapter 5, verse 110. Okay? Write it down. Surah Al-Maida. Chapter 5, verse 110. When God said, Jesus, son of Mary, remember my blessing upon thee, upon thy mother, when I confirmed thee with the Holy Spirit, to speak to men in the cradle and of age, and then it talks about Allah teaching him the book, wisdom, Torah, gospel, and he created and gave life. All right. When I confirm thee with the Holy Spirit, here's the third passage of the Quran, agreeing with God's true word, the Holy Bible, that Jesus was strengthened by the Spirit. Even though the Islamic Spirit, the Islamic, the Islamic God are counterfeit, still, the Quran is trying to present them in a way that they're supposed to be one and the same. They're not. When I confirm thee with the Holy Spirit, chapter 5, verse 110. Now, what's the word again? For confirm, it's ayad. Ayad. Ayaduka. Ayaduka. Okay? You see it, guys? Let me ask you a question. What kind of power and attributes must the Spirit have to guide Jesus, to strengthen Jesus, to do, do those miracles? Because I want you to see what the point is. The Spirit is assisting Jesus, guiding Jesus, strengthening Jesus to do all those miracles. Right? Do you understand what is being said here? Does everyone get it? Hadassah, everyone else, but are you getting the point? Glory to God, this is being recorded. All right. Now, not only does the Holy Spirit strengthen Jesus, the Quran says the Holy Spirit, which is a spirit from Allah, strengthens all believers. Write down chapter 58, verse 22. Chapter 58, verse 22 of the Quran. Write it down, because I'm going to now post it. Chapter 58, verse 22. If you don't see it, that's fine. I'm going to read it, and I'm going to then quote the relevant part. Okay? 58, 22. Thou shalt not find any people who believe in God in the last day, who are loving to anyone who opposes God and his messenger. Did you catch it? If you truly believe in Allah and Muhammad, you will not love those who oppose, deny Allah and Muhammad, his messenger. 
not though they were their fathers. Even if it's your fathers, your sons, your brothers, or your clan, you won't love them. You will hate them for the sake of Allah and His Messenger. Now these believers who do not love those who do not believe in Allah and His Messenger, these He has written faith upon their hearts and has confirmed them with the Spirit from Himself. Bam! Confirmed them. Let me write it down. Okay. He has confirmed all of them, them, with a spirit from himself. Okay? There you go. That's the part. Now, what is the word for confirmed? It's the same verb used in the last three verses where it says, Holy Spirit strengthened Jesus. Watch here. Right? Wa ayaddahum. Wa ayaddahum. From the verb ayad. Ayaddahum. Ayaddahum. From Ayad. This tells us that the Spirit from Allah is the same Holy Spirit who strengthens Ayad believers. Now let me ask you a question. What kind of attributes must this Spirit have to strengthen all Muslims the world over at the same time keeping them faithful to Allah? What kind of attributes must He have? Tell me, come on. All Muslims who truly believe are kept, preserved, strengthened, confirmed by the Spirit. Um, omnipotent, right? But hold on. He must also know who they are and where they're at. So he has to be powerful enough. He has to know who they are and be with them personally. So that means the Holy Spirit, the Spirit from Allah, is all-powerful, all-knowing, present everywhere. Bam! Allah's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, can appear as a man and speak. Allah's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, is breathed out by Allah. So He's a part of Allah, not part of creation. Allah's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, says He's a messenger of Mary's Lord, of Allah. So He's not the same as Allah. And yet Allah's Spirit creates, gives life, and strengthens all believers at the same time, showing that He's Creator, life giver and fully divine because he's omnipresent omnipotent omniscient what else do you need guys what's left what is left who then is the spirit in the Quran he is God distinct from Allah does that mean that he's the same Holy Spirit of the Bible absolutely not it's a satanic counterfeit Satan's taking enough biblical truth making it part of Islam to entice you into thinking it's the same, but they're not. But still, what Satan intended for evil, God is now using for his glory to bring Muslims to the true God. Now, how do you respond to this? Now, let me show you what Muslims say about this spirit. Abdullah Yusuf Ali, the late Abdullah Yusuf Ali, in his commentary on 5822, which I posted in my article, Okay, which I'll give you the link to right here. Jesus, the pre-existent divine word and spirit of God. Here you go. Save this link. Here's the link. Here is what Abdullah Yusuf Ali says. Here's what Abdullah Yusuf Ali says about the spirit. Are you ready? Here's what he says. Now, I'm going to try to post it. If it doesn't appear, that's okay. I'll post the relevant part, okay? His commentary on chapter 58, verse 22, it's found in the meaning of the Holy Quran, page 1518, page 1518, footnote 5365. Footnote 5365. You got it, Psalm 110. Does this show up? I just posted it. Did it show up? If not, that's okay. I'll read it. Do you see it? Oh, praise Jesus. It went through. It went through, huh? Adess and everyone else? Okay, let's read. Guys, Renee, everyone, read. This is a Muslim in his commentary on the Quran. Compare following. He's saying, look at chapter 2, verse 87, 253, which is the verses I cited. So he's telling you, go to these verses about the Holy Spirit strengthening people, where it is said that God strengthened the prophet Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Here we learn that all good and righteous men are strengthened by God 
with the Holy Spirit, all good and righteous men have the Holy Spirit strengthening them. If anything, the phrase used here is stronger, a spirit from himself. Whenever anyone offers his heart in faith and purity to God, God accepts it, now watch, engraves that faith on the seeker's heart and further fortifies him with the divine spirit. Divine spirit, which we can no more define adequately than we can define in human language the nature of God. Bam! Yusuf Ali admits that this spirit has to be divine and is beyond our ability to comprehend and explain because the divine spirit is just as incomprehensible as the nature of God. Wow! A Muslim admits that Allah's spirit is divine and that we cannot adequately explain and define any more than we can God's nature? Do you guys see it or no? Do you see it? Wow! How many of you are blown away by all this evidence in the Quran that God and His sovereignty allowed to be there? God has nothing to do with the Quran. It's Satan. But still, God is in control. How many of you are blown away with such evidence that shows that the Muslims have no ground to attack the Trinity anymore? You got it, Renee. Right? But now let me show you what Malana Muhammad Ali now He's actually an Ahmadiyya, so many Sunni Muslims won't accept him. The problem is that Malala Muhammad Ali, he passed away. He produced a Quran translation in English that influenced the translation of Abdullah Yusuf Ali and others. Let me show you what this Muslim says about chapter 15 of the Quran, 29. Remember that chapter where it says, Allah breathed the spirit into Adam? Notice what he's going to say about that spirit. Chapter 15, verse 29. It's all in my article. Did this show up? I just posted. If not, I'll just read it. Did that quotation show up? Okay, that's fine. It's in my article, and I'll quote the relevant part. This shows, this is what he says, Mulana Muhammad Ali in his Quran commentary and translation. This shows that man is made complete when the divine spirit, here's another Muslim who calls the spirit that Allah breathes into man to make him alive, divine. When the Divine Spirit is breathed into him, it should be noted that the Divine Spirit, Arabic Ruh, does not mean here the animal soul in man. It doesn't mean your soul, but the Spirit of Allah that gives him perfection. Bam! Here's this Muslim, although he's an Ahmadiyya, and Sunnis won't consider him true Muslim, still, he admits that the Quran is identifying this Spirit that Allah breathes into man to make him alive as divine, and he's not the human soul in man, but it's the Spirit of Allah, and the Spirit of Allah is the divine. Wow. Okay. Let me now quote it in parts. Let me quote it in parts. Did that show up? That part show up? Okay, here's the second part. Did that show up? Good. So now you can see it for yourself. And in that article, let me give you a link to my article. It's a long one, but it's worth your time reading. I'm refuting Basam Zawadi, who tried to be a Muslim polemicist, but the Lord sent him packing, glory to Jesus. This is my thorough refutation of his poor attempt of denying that Jesus is divine even according to the Quran. So there's the link to the article. Let me give you the link to the net because some people can't open the .org link. So let me give you the answeringislam.net. In some Muslim countries you can't get the .org. Save that link. These quotes are in that article. There's another one. Here's another one. Okay. Here's another one. Malana Muhammad Ali on chapter 32 verse 9 of the Quran because in 32 verse 9 it says Allah breathed his spirit into mankind in general chapter 32 verse 9 okay notice his comments again folks it won't show up I'll read it and then I'll post the relevant part here's his commentary which is online for free by the way thank the Lord for internet the verse shows that the Spirit of God is breathed into every man <clears throat> this point pay attention this points to a mystical relation between human nature and divine nature. Bam! God's spirit, 
is the divine nature that unites with human nature. This points to a mystical relation between human nature and divine nature. The word ruh does not here mean the animal soul, meaning your human spirit. Because the animal soul is common to man in the animal kingdom. It is something that distinguishes man from the animal world. It is due to the spirit divine. The spirit divine that he, man, rules creation. And it's due to the same divine spirit in him. Wow! That he receives a new life after death. A life which he lives in God and with God. The meaning with God or liqa Allah as it is called in verse 10. Wait. Spirit divine, divine spirit. That's the divine nature that unites with you, human nature. And that's distinct from your animal soul, the soul in your body. And this is a Muslim saying this. Here's the PDF to the file. You can go look at verse 9a. It's there. This is it. Go there and read it for yourself. Go to 9a of that chapter. You'll see this quotation. It's all in my article. And here's the link to the PDF file of the translation of chapter 15, verse 29. Okay, guys. What have we learned thus far about the Spirit? The Spirit of Allah is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Allah comes out of Allah because Allah breathes it out of himself. So it's a part of Allah, not part of creation. So it's not a creature. can't be Gabriel. This spirit can appear as a man and speak, so he's a person. This spirit says he's the messenger of Allah. So he's not Allah, he's distinct from him. Even though he's a part of him and comes from him. This spirit creates and gives life. And the spirit has the omni-attributes of God, which is why Yusuf Ali, an Orthodox Muslim, and Mulana Muhammad Ali, a heterodox Muslim, both call this spirit divine, spirit divine, divine spirit, and that once this spirit is united to you, that means divine nature is being united with human nature. And these are the words of not Christians, but Muslims, one orthodox, one heterodox. What's left? What's going on here? Allah, the Quran, and the spirit. Al-Masihu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, wal-ibn, wal-ruh al-Quddus, ilan wahid. Praise be the God and Father, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, I have one more section to discuss. Can you stick around for that section? Or are you tired? One more section. Then let's take a short five-minute break, Lord willing. Adessa, you can stick around or are you leaving? I'm going to provide conclusive proof the Spirit is not an angel. Okay, five-minute break, guys. Lord willing, we'll be back. Okay, guys, can you hear me? Thank our brother Nehemiah for recording this. Praise the Lord Jesus. Pray that I can build up my YouTube page to bless others. So, glory to God. Are you with me here? Praise the Lord. Oh, Rob, Christian, everyone else, you've been blessed today. God has blessed me to be here since what? What time have I been here? I've been teaching since what? 12, I think. All right, so, glory to Jesus. All right, <clears throat> I got one more section to deal, then we'll be done with Islam and the Trinity. Glory to God, it's recorded. Part one is recorded. Now with part two, we got it all. I'm going to encourage you, once it's up, get the links, pass it on to others, go back, listen, memorize the material, and then share it. Destroy this lie, this myth that Islam teaches pure monotheism. It doesn't. Not only is it a false, satanic counterfeit of Judeo-Christianity, it also has its own Godhead, but it's not the true God. But pray that the true God can use that information to bring them to the true God. Amen? For the glory of the Trinity, for the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For the glory of Christ. Amen? You guys with me? You getting it or no? Come on now. You did? Come on. Wake up, guys. Woo! Pow! All right. <clears throat> now, Renee, you're asking, where does it say Allah breathed out the Spirit? The Spirit is breathed out from Allah? Let me give you the verses. It's not 1916 to 21. There it says, Allah sent the Spirit. It's 2191, write down chapter 21, verse 91 of the Quran. A lot of places, but I'm going to give you a couple specific. 2191, right? 6612, 6612 of the Quran. 
1529 of the Quran and 329. Okay? 329. There it says, Allah breathed his spirit, my spirit, our spirit, his spirit. Breathe. So they can't tell you it's a creature. They can't tell you it's Gabriel. Because unless they want to believe that Gabriel is a part of Allah and Allah breathed Gabriel out of himself, the spirit is not part of creation. Unless they want to say that Allah's breath is created. There's a part of him created. <clears throat> you with me? Imagine using this in a debate with Shabar Ali, that charlatan. You will send him packing and he'll never show his face to debate the Trinity again. Seriously, I'm not lying. And Hadassah, you saw it, every one of you saw it. When these arguments are used, and you know how to use them by the grace of God's Spirit, the Muslims do not know how to respond except to attack and call you a liar. Right? This isn't the first Muslim this happened to. This is now the fourth Muslim on Paltok that didn't know how to get out of this problem. Osman, this guy here, Kakashi, Ahlul Bayt Ali, Islam answers back. And Islam answers back as the spirit. I don't see him anymore. I hope that he's repentant now he's a believer in Jesus. Pray for them. We're not here to destroy their arguments. We're here to win their hearts. So sometimes we have to destroy their arguments to win their hearts for the glory of Jesus. So I'm excited. Let's do the second part. Because Islamic theology teaches the Holy Spirit, right? is Angel Gabriel, I'm going to refute that lie. Number one, if the Spirit is Gabriel, that means Gabriel is co-creator, co-life giver, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, and a part of Allah. So if they're going to tell you the Spirit is Gabriel, then they're saying Gabriel came out of Allah, because Allah breathed him out. Gabriel entered Mary and got her pregnant. Gabriel creates and gives life. And Gabriel strengthens all believers simultaneously at the same time. Right? So that means they made Gabriel into God. So they have now Allah and Gabriel, another God. You get it? Is that clear? But now, let me show you from the Quran, the spirit is not Gabriel because the spirit is not an angel. Write down 1785 of the Quran. Surah Al-Isra, 1785. Everyone get... get Gets the point so far? Muhammad is asked about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, a ruh. Here is the perfect opportunity for Muhammad to say, the Spirit is Gabriel. The Spirit is Gabriel. Chapter 17, verse 85. You guys listening? Is the sound coming in? Just want to make sure. 1785. Here is the answer. Muhammad is asked, who is the Spirit, Muhammad? A ruh. The Spirit, not what a, what is a Spirit, who is the Spirit, 1785. Did it show up here or no? I just posted it. If you can't see it, that's okay. Did it? Okay, good. Glory to God. I does say you know this, but let's read it together. Here's Muhammad's answer. They questioned thee concerning the Spirit, ar-ruh, the Spirit, it's definite. Say, the Spirit is of the bidding of my Lord. In other words, the Spirit is under the command of my Lord. The Spirit does my Lord's bidding. The Spirit obeys my Lord's command. You have been given of knowledge nothing except a little. Bam! Here was an opportunity for Muhammad to say, hey, the Spirit is Gabriel. No, that's not what he says. He goes, all I know about the Spirit is that he does my Lord's bidding. He obeys my Lord's commands, and only a little knowledge has been given concerning his identity. That's it. Stop. End of story. Did you catch it? Surah Al-Isra, 1785. Why then do Muslims tell us that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, is Gabriel, when Muhammad said, hey, this is all I know about him. He carries out the commands of my Lord. That's it. That's it. Only a little knowledge has been given concerning his identity. Why didn't Muhammad say, hey, the Spirit is Gabriel, Jibreel? Why is it, he says, you know what? We don't know much about the Spirit. All we know, all that Allah has revealed, is that the Spirit carries out the orders of my Lord, your Lord. That's it. That's all I know. Don't ask me anything else. You guys understand this? Like, Joshua, all of you? Renee? The Muslims will tell you, Renee, that the Holy Spirit is Gabriel. Say where? Quote them 1785. 1785 says, your, your prophet didn't even know 
that much about the Spirit. So then how do you know more than him? Show me anywhere in the Quran that says, Jibreel is the Holy Spirit. Show me one verse where it says, Gabriel is the Spirit of Truth. Gabriel is the Spirit of Allah. Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. You won't find it. It's not there. And this verse shows he can't be Gabriel, right? Is that clear? You got it, Renee. I love that. Now write down these verses. Chapter 70, verse 4. Chapter 16, verse 2. Write these down. 16, verse 2. Chapter 78, 38. Chapter 97, verse 4. Write down 70, verse 4. Chapter 16, verse 2. 78, 38. 97, verse 4 of the Quran. I'm going to start with 16, 2. Here's more proof the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, is not an angel. 16, 2. Watch here. If it doesn't show up, I'll read it. Chapter 16, verse 2. Okay. He sends down the angels with the spirit of his command upon whomsoever he will among his servants. Did you catch it? Did it show up, by the way? Did it show up? Did you see that verse? Okay, that's fine. That's okay. Let me reread it again. That's pal talk for you. He sends down the angels with the spirit of his command upon whomsoever he will. You catch it? If the spirit is one of the angels, why distinguish the angels and the spirit? Did that show up? He sends down the angels with the spirit of his command, meaning... Allah sends down the Spirit with the angels to then reveal His commands to His servants. So the Spirit comes down with the orders of Allah to reveal it to whoever Allah wants it to be revealed. But the Spirit is accompanied with the angels. So notice the angels come with the Spirit, meaning the angels are not the Spirit. Right? If the angels come with the Spirit, that means they're not the same. They're different, right? Well, isn't Gabriel an angel? That means he's one of the angels that comes with the Spirit. Therefore, Gabriel is not the Spirit. Does this make sense to you guys or no? Let me give you the rest. Chapter 70, verse 4. Chapter 70, verse 4. Okay. Chapter 70, verse 4. A blessed night, a blessed day of teaching. Praise the Holy Spirit of the living God, of the Father and the Son. Okay, does that show up? Chapter 70, verse 4? Do you see it? To him, to Allah, the angels and the spirit mount up in a day whereof the measure is 50,000 years. Did you catch it? There are three groups. To him, Allah, the angels, they're not Allah, and the spirit. Three groups. Allah, angels, and spirit. Well, if the spirit is Gabriel, wouldn't he be part of the angels? Why then is he differentiated from the angels? Why are they different? Because the spirit is not an angel. Do you see it? Or no? Do you see it or no? I always wondered what YH is. Joshua cares and others keep pointing YH. I don't know what the H is. I know, yeah, yes, but what is H? And Hadassa, you know this. Okay, now, 7838. 7838 of the Quran. 7838. Did I show up or no? Chapter 78, verse 38. Because I don't know if you can see the verses or not. I see it, but you don't. Do you? Chapter 78, verse 38 of the Quran. <clears throat> okay. Upon the day when the Spirit and the angels, notice they're distinct again. It's not the angels or the spirits, it's the Spirit and the angels, two groups. Stand in ranks, they shall not speak. Save him to whom the All-Merciful has given leave and who speaks all right. So notice the Spirit is subordinate to Allah, subject to Allah, is ordered by Allah, commanded by Allah, right? And waits for Allah to allow it to speak. And yet this is the Spirit who is different from the angels. This is the Spirit who comes out of Allah. Allah breathes the Spirit out of himself. This is the Spirit who is the messenger of Allah. This is the Spirit who enters into people to make them alive or get them pregnant like Mary. This is the spirit who can appear as a man and speak, which means he's a person. Obviously he's a person because he stands in ranks with angels, something only a person can do, although he's not a human person. 
even though he can appear as a man, and this is a spirit who's omnipotent, omniscient, <clears throat> omnipresent. Wow, what else do you need? That means the spirit must be fully God, and yet he's not Allah. But he's a part of Allah. So that means the one God, Allah, exists at least as 116 persons. Why do I say 116? The 114 chapters of the Quran, all of them have consciousness. All of them can speak independently and appear separately. So that means there's 114 conscious persons, agents that make up the Quran. And then you have the spirit of Allah, and then you have Allah. And all of this is part of Allah. So Allah exists as 116 persons. Bam. Allah, other 14 chapters of the Quran, and the Spirit, do the math. 116, folks. 116. Final verse, chapter 97, verse 4. Glory to God, this is now recorded. Chapter 97, verse 4. The Lord Jesus, grant me clarity of thought, perfect recall, and the power to speak these passages. Strengthen me spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically. Give me the help I need to glorify him. Bless my voice. <clears throat> 97 verse 4. In it, 97 verse 4. In it, the angels and the spirit descend. So notice, angel, spirit, ascend and descend together as a group. By the leave of their Lord upon every command. Wait. Angels and the spirit, two distinct groups. Notice it doesn't say angels, or, nor does it say spirits. The angels and the spirit. Gabriel is an angel, so he's part of the angels. Therefore, he cannot be the spirit because the spirit is separate from angels. Spirit and the angels, Allah, three groups. Allah, one. Angels, another group. And the spirit, another. They're not one and the same. So if anyone tells you the spirit is Gabriel, say baloney. Nowhere does the Quran say the spirit is Gabriel, the Gabriel's, Gabriel's the spirit. All throughout the Quran, the spirit is differentiated from angels. And when Muhammad is asked, about the spirit of Ruh, he says, hey, the spirit does the bidding of my Lord, carries out the commands of my Lord, brings the orders of my Lord. And you've been only given a little, little knowledge about the spirit, 1785. End of story. There goes Islam. The true triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit, exposed this religion and has destroyed it before us to take Muslims captive for the glory of Jesus. End of story, folks. What else do you want? What else do you need? Glory to God, this is now recorded, parts one and two. Part one is already online. Now I is going to post part two sometime later tonight. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Yahweh, to the glory of God the Father, amen. And again, if you guys feel that God has anointed me and filled me with the Spirit to preach His Word and teach His Word, to strengthen Christians and help them expose Islam to win Muslims to Christ, then pray for me hard. Pray for me, my wife and daughters, that God keeps us in love with him, saves us from the evil one, washes us in the blood of Jesus, fills us with the Spirit, keeps us healthy, holy, and ask the Lord to provide for this ministry so I can keep doing it for the glory of Christ, provide for my family as I glorify Christ. Now, if you feel led by the Spirit to want to partner with us financially, I'm going to give you the links again. If you know people who want to partner with us financially, pass them on for the glory of Christ, right? Let me give it to you. And if you have questions, this is the time to ask me because I'm about to leave. I've been here for about five hours, if not more than that. And I pray that I was blessed because I'm blessed. Just let you know, guys, you're not just being blessed. You're blessing me because you're giving me opportunity to be used of the Lord to glorify his name. Here's the link where you can partner with me on Patreon. Right? Pray that I build up my YouTube page sooner than later. Here's the link. That's one. Another way you can partner with me is by going to the South Asian Friendship Center website, which is the organization that I'm a part of. They have a way you can donate online. So here's the link. You go here. Save these links, please, and pass them on and pray for us. You go here, right? You'll see a box that says, this gift is designated for, you can put in Sam Shamoon. You can do it on a monthly basis if the Lord puts it on your heart. Thank you, guys. Here it goes. I love you guys for the sake of the Lord. If I've offended you, forgive me. And I pray I make no mistakes. If I made any mistakes, may the Lord save you from those errors, correct it in me, not to repeat it, and pray for me when no one's watching. I'm sold out for Jesus, in love with Jesus, and walking in holiness. And bathe my seven-year-old and five-year-old and their beautiful mother in prayer. 
Christ is risen, risen indeed. Lord Jesus, we love you. Wash us in your blood. Fill us with your spirit. Seal us for your glory. Save us, Lord, please. And reveal to us how real you are. To never doubt you. We need you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So I guess there's no questions, huh?